By providing Autogen with our custom functions, we could make Autogen more reliable and gain control over some parts of the execution process. The arguments used for the function call and the result of the function call are marked green in the terminal, making it easy for us to test and debug it later. Using function calls brings more consistency to Autogen, as the agents use each time our well-tested solutions instead of trying to find new ways. So let's see how we can use this important feature in our apps. We create a new folder for our project and switch to the new folder. From within the folder, we start Visual Studio Code. First, we create a requirements.txt file and paste a list of packages required for our project. Next, we create a virtual environment and activate the virtual environment. When activated, the name of the virtual environment appears before the prompt, in our case, vnv. Now we can install our packages using pip. This takes some time and after all of the packages are installed, the prompt comes back and we can clear the screen, close the terminal and close the requirements.txt file. The next step is to add the OAI config list. Here we can list our models and the keys. You can have multiple models listed here, even local open source models, which we will cover in the upcoming tutorials. Now that the preparation is finished, we create our app.py file. In the first part of this tutorial, we use Autogen without a function call. We use a simple combination of the user proxy agent and an assistant agent. First, we import the agents from Autogen. Next, we load the configuration of OAI config list to config list. Now it's time to create our assistant agent. We name it assistant and provide a system message. We ask it not to show any appreciation. Otherwise, the agents go in an infinite loop of thanking each other. To prevent this, we additionally set the request timeout to 60 seconds. After the assistant is defined, we create our user proxy agent. Here we give it the name user proxy and define coding as working directory. If in the conversation process some code gets generated, it goes into this directory. We use a lambda function to check if the content ends with terminate and use it as is terminate message. Always is the default value for human input mode, but we added it here for clarity. With always, we need to confirm the steps in the conversation. Later, if you want to automate the process, we can set it to never. Finally, we initiate the chat between the user proxy agent and the assistant with the prompt, what is the latest price of Apple? Now we can test the script and run it in the terminal. So the conversation starts and as expected, the assistant has no access to the real-time data and informs the user proxy agent about it. As the human input mode is set to always, we need to provide our feedback. We let them know that they should use Yahoo Finance to get the data and we already installed the library. This saves us time and cost as otherwise it may suggest other libraries to get the same result. When we go further, we get some solutions to get the data and we hit enter to confirm. The conversation goes back and forth till a solution is found and we get finally the answer we wanted and the latest closing price of Apple. Sometimes this conversation goes in an infinite loop and we have to terminate the execution. So we need a more reliable solution. And here comes the autogen function call. 
which brings us to the second part of this tutorial. The first step is to create a function. We create a new file to implement our own function. We import Yahoo Finance and define the function getStockPrice to get a ticker and return the latest closing price of the stock. As we will import this file into our app, we check if the file is executed directly or is just imported. If the file is executed directly, it will test the function and print the result. To test it, we execute this file directly and sure enough, we see the latest price of Apple. This shows that our function works as intended and we can use it in our Autogen app. Going back to our app.py, we import the function. The next step is to list all of the functions that our agents can use. In our case, our list has just one function. Feel free to expand this list on your own. We covered this subject in multiple tutorials on this channel. Here just a recap. We give our function a name like getStuckPrice. Then we use a description. This description helps the agents and LLM, in our case OpenAI, when to use this function. Additionally, we define the parameters used by this function. In this case, it's only ticker and ticker is required. Next, we need to pass the list of our functions to the LLM config of our assistant. The next step is to map the description of the function to a real Python function in our user proxy. With that set, we are ready to test our app and use the autogen function call. But before that, there is one change we should make in the OAI config file. Here we do not need the GPT-4 anymore and we can use the more cost-efficient GPT-3.5 Turbo 0613 which is optimized for function calling. Back to our app, we open the terminal and run the app. This time we do not need to waste time and cost on finding a solution to get the latest price of Apple. Instead we see the suggested function call to get stock price with ticker AAPL for Apple in green. As the human input mode is still on always, we need to confirm the autogen function call. And sure enough, the response of the function call comes back and we see the result in green in the conversation. This is much better solution than the first part of this tutorial. To wrap it up, you can use Autogen in many patterns to give you some inspiration on how to solve a problem. But once you find a solution, it's much better to create your own custom tools and functions. You can even provide Autogen with Langchain tools. But this is the subject of coming tutorials. If you like the content of this tutorial, Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more contents of this kind. Good luck.